All right, today we're looking at this Husqvarna riding mower. It's a LTH 1438, and the cover for the engine actually says 13.5, so I don't know why they didn't make it a 135.48. That's even more numbers to sound better. This was at a mower shop that I, I got it from, and uh, they said it backfires out the carburetor, and then it backfires out the exhaust. Supposedly the owner was driving it and it made a noise and and you know started backfiring and shut off and the, the mower shop checked it out now they could only go so far because they're limited by how much the customer wants to spend you know they might have a really good idea what's wrong with it but if the cost is too much you know sometimes the customer just doesn't want to take that gamble because you know they may have to take it apart to to diagnose it to be a hundred percent sure but luckily i don't have that problem i could tear that engine apart all the way down to nothing and you know if it's one of those i can't figure out all i lose is the money that i paid for it and it becomes a parts machine so I'm pretty much free to do what I want. You know, if this is what I want to spend my time on, then I can do that. And, you know, I might even learn something that I didn't already know when it comes to what's causing a problem on something. You know, and if I make a video on it, you know, somebody else can learn that too. So, you know, that's the overall goal here. Kind of share knowledge and, you know, maybe somebody will learn something that they can save money on at some point. So I put a battery in this already, and uh, I'm going to wheel it over into the carport. Hopefully there's enough light, because it's just too hot out here in the sun. So we're going to get it over there, and then uh, we're going to start troubleshooting this. And I, I found a couple things already that kind of concerned me. Now the cover was already loose. It was on the engine when I got it. You know, they put all the screws back in. It was at a mower shop. It wasn't just some random person tearing into it you know but i did see a couple things that i'm going to point out that concern me and you know maybe one of them is the overall problem i i don't know so let's get this moved and see what we can figure out well like i said there is a couple things i noticed on this but first we're going to see if it'll do anything all right so before i point anything out that i found we're going to try and start this and, and just see what happens. So we're going to start at zero. All right. The choke's not closed, and I'll explain that pretty soon here. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Okay, so it is running. It doesn't like the idea, but it's running.
Well, it runs. It runs a lot better than what I thought it would. So what I was told by the mower shop was that they suspected a loose cam gear in which the timing would change. And that was, you know, they were saying that because of the backfire and they said it backfired out the carburetor, it would backfire out the exhaust, you know, indicating that probably the cam was moving, you know, back and forth on the gear. But one thing that I found when I opened the hood and looked around a little bit was that, well, for one, the choke won't close. The choke seems to be stuck. It, it's a new carburetor here. That choke may be stuck against the housing here to where it's going to be very difficult to start. And it's going to be starting lean. And usually a lean condition could make it backfire out the carburetor. It, it actually did that, you know, for me. I think it, it used up the carb cleaner. And then... Uh, it was trying to start just on, on gas without any choke. And the other thing I noticed was right here, the spark plug wire, the boot seems to be burned because it was touching, it was very close to the exhaust. And I suspect it may have been losing spark intermittently through there. You know, I tried to look and see. I didn't see it arcing at all. But right there, I just knocked off that last little flap. And that's that's the spark plug wire inside there. And uh, it doesn't take much for the spark to jump when it don't have enough insulation. So it looks like a new spark plug in there. We're going to take that out and see what see what that looks like. So this spark plug really doesn't look too bad. It does have a little bit of carbon on it, so possible that there's a lot of carbon buildup inside the cylinder. That the head may have a lot of carbon causing the uh, causing the fuel mixture to light prematurely, which could easily make it backfire out the carburetor. But supposedly it has 120 pounds of compression, which would indicate internally that everything's in pretty good condition. So I may change out that coil and try it again. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going get to a, get a coil off another engine. Hopefully the flywheel is the same size as something a little bit bigger. So that the, uh, the curvature of the coil is the right size. Power engine. So that should be a higher horsepower coil. So maybe it'll bump this horsepower up to like 14. Like it says on the hood. Wouldn't that be something? So what I'm doing here, I'm just trying to, trying to shock those screws a little bit. So that the threads unlock. I like to do that before they break off. And these may have already been out by the other mower shop. I, I don't know. The coil looks about as rusty as the flywheel, so it's probably just the original one. They may have just checked the gap to make sure that it was good because they suspected a timing problem. But I suspect a, a spark plug wire problem as much as anything else. said right here that's and that's burned through and you know it wouldn't take much for the spark to jump across that intermittently well it looks like it's exactly the same so that should not be a problem let's get this wire plugged in first before I hide the, the little terminal there 
There we go. I'll put these screws in here. I'm pretty sure that the gap is supposed to be ten thousandths and I know what some of y'all are thinking I know it I was thinking that when I was looking for my feeler gauges and these are not the ones I prefer to use these ones are old enough that some of you guys probably have some of these so I don't have a, a 10 I have an 11 and I have a 6 and a 3 smallest one of course broke off so we're just going to go with 11 but I know what you guys are thinking oh I use a matchbook cover well I'm not going out and buying a matchbook just so I can set gap on these If you're at this point where you're changing this coil out, it should be more likely that you have feeler gauges than you have a matchbook. Unless you saved the matchbook from a long, long time ago. Matchbooks are usually now thick lighters. Okay, I'm running into a little situation here. Where this coil is thinner. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe the higher horsepower coil doesn't have as many uh, is not laminated as much because this here is thinner than what was on the screws look the same size I'm going to save the screws from both of them here but I don't want to break anything off in there so that's a little troubling I'm tempted to go shorten these screws but really I'm gonna find washers just put washers on well we're gonna give it a shot it looks very close as that how far the coil sticks out the bottom. So I was lucky. I, I was able to find a threaded threaded washer for each screw here. So that'll be nice. I don't have to worry about them coming loose. They're not even going to fall off when I turn the bolt upside down to put it in. Because they'll be threaded on. I can tighten them up. Except for this. Does not want to fit on there. One. Okay, here we go. And 
And the other bolt with the threaded washer on it. Now we'll see, see what happens here. I need to go get a spark plug socket yet. All right, so we're not hitting anywhere. Now let's get the spark plug back in. The spark plug actually looks okay. If it'll go back in on this socket. That's yeah, a little scary. Spark plug is a BRK5E. From NGK. Really should be a champion. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge here. I do not like the way that feels. Do not like it at all. It just comes to a screeching halt there. So let's do the unthinkable and put a ratchet on it. I did have to take it all the way out with the ratchet. But I just thought that was because the spark plug socket was rubbing the exhaust. I am not liking this. Not at all. So is the problem that the head is rejecting this NGK spark plug? Or are the threads slightly not as good as they should be? Well, I thought I had a spark plug tap, but it's not for this size spark plug. It's for a smaller one. We'll try a different spark plug. Well, it started easier. Yeah, I don't like the threads in this head. I think 
think they somehow got a little bit damaged. The spark plug, spark plug may even not have been all the way in. Wow. Looks like it's a little bit cross-threaded, like it's a little high. That's going to be hard to fix now. Pretty sure these spark plugs do have a little bit of a downward angle when they're in correctly. I'm thinking this exhaust is in the way of starting it with the socket on it. It is downward a little bit. Is probably how far I had it in before. It's most likely going to get tight here. It's hard to turn. Just like that. Yeah, I definitely don't like that angle. Something just doesn't look right. It'd be my bifocals. But there's about no way to fix it now. No shavings coming out, but it really acts like it's a little bit cross-threaded. No question, it's definitely cross-threaded, but it's tight. I suspect something screwy with that exhaust. I just do. Because the exhaust never hits. Never, never in the way. But that bracket looks straight, like that's where it's always been. But it's possible that this pipe's a little bit at the wrong angle. Like the way it's welded here and the way it's welded there, it should be, should be twisted out a little bit, maybe. So the problem we have on this choke here is that it doesn't move. It's open all the way. And this rod was pushed through the plastic there. 
so I think somehow it got put together that way. But we're going to get this new, this cover off, this brand new carburetor. The, the air filter adapter is what we're taking off here. And see if that choke actually works without this in the way. Because I, I, the problem I suspect, I, I did another another video on just this problem where you put on a new carburetor and the choke doesn't work right. Usually it gets closed, stuck closed, not open. <laughs> wow, that does not want to move at all. I think it's pushed in too far. I think it needs to come out a little farther. Then it may rotate. <clears throat> now this carburetor may have been like this from new. Most likely and it was just put on and nobody checked. Yes, it was definitely stuck. There's a slot in the center here that should should keep this centered. There's these little dimples here. The little dimples that that's where it should stop when it gets slid in there. Somehow it was pushed in too far. It just doesn't fit real well. So there, now it closes. Now we can slide this over to where it's centered in the opening like it should be so there now our choke's working again let's slide this back on tighten it up well we'll hold it against and see so it's so it's still working somehow somehow this got pushed in too far and made it so that the choke didn't operate at all it was just open all the time i'll get this overing back in there Put these two nuts back on. Now our choke should be operational. Now that's a little bit different problem. I haven't seen that yet. But that choke plate goes into a plastic shaft, so it doesn't surprise me that it didn't fit right. Choke closes, choke opens. So it's at least not getting stuck in there. So right now we have a condition where the spark plug's not all the way in. But it's still going to light the fuel mixture. It may come into play. It may be a problem under load with the deck on. Maybe reduced power. But it should still fire at the right time. And it should burn all the fuel. So now our choke is closing. Got our spark plug wire hooked up.
Well, it actually doesn't run too bad. I'm going to attribute that surging to an idle circuit problem, meaning that the idle circuit's just not getting enough fuel to run it at full speed. And, you know, maybe you're thinking, well, what's the idle circuit got to do with running at full speed? Even though the engine's running at its governed top speed, it does seem a little slow. It still uses mostly the idle circuit because the throttle plate's closed just about all the way. It's the same thing as with your car. You step on the gas pedal a little bit, you can get the tack up the red line just with a little bit of throttle. So the throttle plate's closed most of the way until you put a load on it. Then the throttle plate will open up. So, you know, I think we got a little bit of an issue inside the carburetor. It looks like a new one, but that doesn't mean that it's not meant to run too lean. I adjusted this. That's the, the idle mixture, but uh, it doesn't, it, there's not enough fuel being let through somewhere else in the circuit from the bottom of the bowl up through the carburetor. You know, maybe the, the little jet in there needs to be drilled out or something. But I think that's going to be a different video. It does backfire a little bit out the carburetor. And judging by some of the other problems I've seen, obviously the valve cover has been off. And you can tell all the sealer that's around there. That doesn't look like something that a repair shop would do. You know, I think somebody else was working on this before it got to them. That's what, that's what I think. So, you know, the next thing I'm going to do is take off the valve cover and make sure that the valves are not too tight because, uh, you know, backfiring out the carburetor, that would be an indication that the, the intake valve's not adjusted right. But under load, it doesn't seem to be a problem. So it's probably running lean on the, in, on the, on the idle circuit. And, you know, maybe it's lean enough to make it backfire, but I really think I need to take that valve cover off and check the valve clearance. You know, like I say, judging by the other problems I've seen on it. And I need to get a, a tap for a spark plug socket, a 14 millimeter tap so I can fix those threads. That spark plug needs to be in all the way. But I, I think for the most part, the engine's good. I think the biggest problem that I ran into was the uh, the boot for the spark plug was maybe causing the spark loss and you know intermittent backfiring, and then the choke was a problem. You know somehow that got to be not not the right way. Now it actually starts and runs all on its own. Don't even need to spray it, and it don't even backfire when it starts up. So. I'm going to go inside and cool down. It is way too hot out here. So uh, I think, you know, maybe those other things I talked about working on, they may, may be in next, the next video. I think we're going to wrap this up here. Like it runs good enough to use, but not good enough to return to the customer or, or good enough to sell. But it's de it'll definitely cut grass like this. It's just not quite what it should be yet. But I have confidence that we'll get it there. So I think we're going to wrap up this one and and get this video out there so you can see it. And, you know, I think this will be a part one of two or three till we get this mower all situated. So, you know, hopefully this helps somebody out, you know, and if you like this, you know, hit the subscribe button so you see the next ones.